Hey, welcome. I'm so glad to see you this morning or this afternoon, whenever you're watching it. Um, thank you for joining me on these devotionals. It's been such a blessing to get started on these and to spend this time with you. And I hope it's been a blessing for you. Please click like and subscribe if it's been a blessing for you. You're also welcome to share these with friends. If you'd like, if you're finding benefit from them and let me know in the comments. So um, today we want to talk about what's been on your altar. And um, so during Hanukkah, what happened was the um, Greeks were bringing in pigs and they were sacrificing them on the altar in the temple. And the thing about that is that pigs are unclean to Jewish people. And God said really specifically in Leviticus that um, the pigs were not food. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty clear in there. So you can make your own choices about that. But the, um, the Hebrew people do not eat pig. It's unclean. It's actually considered an abomination. And so when the Greeks were sacrificing that abomination on the altar, um, what happened was that made the whole altar unclean. So let's talk a little bit then about what that means, that the altar was unclean. And how does that affect you as a person who is now considered the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, who you have from God? You've been bought with a price, so you're supposed to glorify God in your body. So what would be the altar of your body then? Um, well, that would be the center of everything that you are. And so scripture calls that the heart or our thoughts and intentions. Um, lev, L, L, Lamed, Bet, or Bet. We've talked about that before. So the heart is your thoughts and intentions, not necessarily your feelings, um, because we can't always trust our heart. And if we are relying on our feelings and if we're relying on that to motivate us through our life, we're going to make a lot of mistakes. And so sometimes those feelings and those thoughts and intentions are not reliable. It's not where we should be putting our attention, just like the altar in the temple when they were putting pork on it, pigs on there and sacrificing that became, made it unclean. Sometimes we have thoughts and intentions and even feelings um, that are making us not be everything that we were created to be. Um, so what that means is that um, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, right? That's in Matthew 6.21. Our treasure is our most important thing, the thing we protect, the thing that um, we kind of hold tight and, and keep close to home. We don't let a lot of people see it. And our heart, again, is our thoughts and intentions. So our thoughts and intentions are what we hold tight, what we keep near to us, and what we put as important. The most important things are the things we think about, right? So we think about certain things, and we ruminate on them. We spend time keeping those thoughts in our brain, and um, it, they take our most thought, they take our most time, they change how we choose what we're going to do, they change our actions as we're moving forward, they strengthen us or they weaken us. So the things that we think about regularly are either going to motivate us to move forward, to be strong, to be confident, to be courageous, to walk in our calling, or they're going to weaken us and make us feel dark and sad and heavy and fearful and make us feel like we can't do anything, we can't accomplish anything. So the things that you're ruminating on, the things that you're putting the most focus on, they're either strengthening you or they're weakening you. They're either helping your relationships grow or they're making your relationships less strong. So now let's focus on that. What really has been on your altar? Where have your thoughts and intentions be, been? What is the most important thing in your life right now? Now, I'm not asking you what you think the most important thing should be. All of us probably would say our relationship with God, 
then our relationship with our spouse, then our children, then our work. Those are the things we should be saying are the most important thing. But I don't want to hear that from you today. I want to hear what, what truly has been in your thoughts, what truly has been in your ten, in ten, ten, words, <laughs> intentions. What really have you been ruminating on? And the way to find that is, at your weakest, most vulnerable times, what is the thought that pops into your head? Or if you're laying there in the middle of the night on your bed and you can't get to sleep, what thoughts are zooming around in your brain? Um, what are you thinking about over and over? What conversations are you trying to fix? Do you ever do that? Do you ever lay there and think, oh, I should have said this, I should have done this, um, I should have, I should have confessed to that, I should have should have, should have, should have. And we just get into the motion of what should have been said, should have been done. When we do that, what those are the things that are we're ruminating on, the things on the altar of our heart, the things that are taking our most time and intention. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go back through Matthew 6, 21 and read that again. And I would like you to write down the things that you've been ruminating on. The thoughts that you've been thinking regularly. What has been going around and around and around in your brain? Is it something you need to clean off the altar? Is it something you need to take to the Father and say, I don't want this anymore? And ask him to change the way you're thinking. And then you make a choice to, to ruminate on the word of God. So if, for example, you've been thinking about a fearful situation Instead, I want you to take the word of God and I want you to turn it around and I want you to say perfect love casts out all fear. Okay, so just take a Bible verse and make it the opposite of the negative things you've been ruminating on. Say that day in and day out. It's going to start changing your brain. It's going to start cleaning off the altar of your heart and it's going to start building relationships instead of hurting them. It's going to start strengthening your daily walk instead of weakening, weakening it. It's going to change how you choose your actions each and every day. If you start taking those thoughts captive, and if you let the treasures of your heart be the word of God, instead of the negativity that pops up all of the time in your thoughts. So go to Matthew 6, 21, make a list of the things that have been most prominent in your thoughts and start writing the opposite if they've been negative. If they've been all positive, that's amazing. And I'd like love to hear that too. If you have found that you have been struggling with your thoughts and in your intentions, and you find that there's some woundedness that you need to go through, please go to my website, which is eileencjones.com. And it's in the description below the video, E-I-L-E-E-N, cjones.com and at the top you're going to find a thing called anointed to soar and under anointed to soar there are some sessions and you can learn more about that and i would love to help you go through these thoughts and help you get to the root of why you're thinking these thoughts regularly and why you have not been able to overcome them and move forward so i'd love to help you with that please click subscribe please click like and um, give me some comments about how these, um, your words have been motivating you and whether you need to change them or not. Let's clean off those altars of our heart, make ourselves pure and ready for the words of the King. All right, you have a great day.